nothing surprises me anymore, but I will tell you strictly from a mathematical and logical perspective, I don't think there's a better play out there whereby you can increase the amount of gold you ultimately end up with without um, spending any money. And in my opinion, really, uh, without, in fact, maybe even decreasing your risk, because the downside risk of silver priced at 22, 23 bucks an ounce to me is completely negligible. Yes, I still believe it. Yes, I still think it's as good of a deal as it ever was or as as, as smart of a deal to the point where I will publicly say I think it is the trade or the opportunity of a generation, certainly of the decade. Uh, uh, an anomaly in geological sense and, and an anomaly in price ratio sense going back 5,000 years. And, you know, one of these things that I would call maybe the, the greatest calculated speculation I've ever seen, I think it's the trade of a generation. I don't say that lightly. I will be the first to admit I'm surprised it has stayed here where it has. But to what Rick had said, you know, what Rick was saying was that gold in, in the previous full four bull cycles led the way. Well, that's exactly what gold is doing here. And what he would also say is that when silver finally caught up in terms of a percentage gain, it catches it and actually pass surpasses it. And when you look at silver from every single metric, um, aside from the fact that it holds the largest concentrated short position on any commodity traded on the exchange, which just reeks of manipulation, it is an asset that is increasing exponentially in its demand in green, in digital and military applications, not to mention monetary, and it is decreasing in its above ground footprint. Uh, it's also decreasing in its below ground footprint in the respect that what it is used in industrial applications or military applications it is used and it is it is gone. It is, you know, the, in terms of recycling, very little silver is recycled because it's used in such small amounts in motherboards or in cell phones or basically anything that conducts electricity or is electronic has a little bit of silver in it. Doesn't make sense to recycle it out. Or if it's used in the tip of a Tomahawk cruise missile, you know, you're not going to dig amongst a crater where the bomb went off looking for uh, residues, uh, silver residue. My point is, is that it is decreasing above ground in its industrial and military applications, and it's decreasing below ground in the respect that for 5,000 years, the ratio of 16 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold not only was consistent in its price, but it got that price ratio because of its geologic ratio. And so for as long as time goes back, you'll see a 16 to one ratio gold to silver until just recently. Or guys like Keith Newmeyer, who you've had on your show, I believe, will say it's coming out of the ground right now. It's seven to one. And he would know. He's the CEO of one of the largest silver mining companies in the world and, and understands this. So it's an asset that is depleting in nature. It is depleting above ground and it is increasing in its use cases. So I will still say, yes, it is. And it, it to me is somewhat surprising that the ratio has stayed where it is for as long as it has. And again, I will tell you that I don't see a better calculated speculation, maybe never have in my career. And it, it, it checks all the boxes and it has very little downside risk. I guess the one uh, fatal flaw perhaps in the in this plan would be you do this and gold becomes unobtainium. Now, could that happen? Sure. Nothing surprises me anymore, but I will tell you strictly from a mathematical and logical perspective, I don't think there's a better play out there whereby you can increase the amount of gold you ultimately end up with without um, spending any money. And in my opinion, really, uh, without, in fact, maybe even decreasing your risk, because the downside risk of silver priced at 22, 23 bucks an ounce to me is completely negligible. And the one or two times that we've seen the markets in the last decade act irrationally, like we saw in 2020, where silver went down to 12 bucks, you'll remember, done again, you couldn't find a thing on the planet for, you know, at least uh, double that make believe melt price, make believe spot price. So, Yes, I still believe it. Yes, I still think it's as good of a deal as it ever was or as, as as smart of a deal to the point where I will publicly say I think it is the trade or the opportunity of a generation, certainly of the decade. And uh, I guess we'll have to see where the chips fall. But no, I haven't been thrown off that trade one bit. 
For much of the past year, the BRICS alliance has unequivocally embraced the concept of de-dollarization, a move partially compelled by Western sanctions. The bloc has been proactive in its efforts and consistently advocated for the increased use of its local currencies as an alternative to the US dollar. The report at the center of this discussion focuses primarily on the rise of digital currencies and how they can challenge the overall dominance of the dollar on the international stage. Several countries, including China, Saudi Arabia, Russia and India, are actively divesting from US treasuries and preferring gold. This trend, characterized by selling rather than repurchasing treasuries, erodes the dollar's hegemony. The diminishing bond purchases by these countries and the growing use of local currencies in transactions gradually undermine the dollar's settlement value, potentially impacting its reserve status over time. Notably, Andy highlights the release of the BRICS Bank's Maharaja bonds, which are exclusively available for purchase in local currencies, excluding the US dollar. This strategic move underscores a systematic challenge by BRICS nations against the West and signifies a deliberate effort to chip away at the dollar's dominance. Now let's return to the interview. Look, when we talk about gold, it, it's in, it, it is infinite duration and finite supply. I think that's a, a cool way of explaining it. <clears throat> and when you contrast that these days with dollars and treasuries, it seems that the dollars and treasuries uh, are represent finite duration, but infinite supply that, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll just continue to, to print and come up with this and, and to the point of a uh, trillion dollars a quarter being issued in treasuries. I mean, it, the, the, the amount of debt issuance is ridiculous. The amount of debt spending and, and stupid spending is, is ridiculous. 